Welcome to Countryside Knitting. My name is Merete. I'm one of the two who runs this podcast about knitting mostly. I live in Norway and uh, this is mostly about me and Janne knitting Norwegian traditional patterns with a lot of Norwegian traditional woolly yarn. This uh, episode will be um, something from me and something from Janne. We live one and a half to two hours drive uh, from each other so we don't actually <laughs> manage to meet every time we would like to. So today we have to just, I have to edit. I have recently been to the afternoon tea party in Orkanger with Patricia from Nitography. She had a knitting retreat and a lot of international wonderful people, crafty people who were in Orkanger and Trondheim and the area for quite some time, I think 10 days. And I was so lucky to meet them and I hope that you have watched my episode from the trip. It was not only from the tea party but also from the trip. We went into a shop. Uh, garn boutique in Fortuna, for instance. That episode had to be a mix of Norwegian and English. I didn't manage uh, to, because people had different kind of languages, it just had to be like this. But now this episode 112, we do it separately, one in Norwegian and one in English. I want to show you some of the things that I'm knitting on right now and I have some crochet uh, when it comes to all the people I met in uh, Orkanger, I think I have kind of an overload it, it, with inspiration and new people, some friendships and somebody I didn't really actually manage to talk so much with, but I would like to continue to, um, to get to know them. So if you watch my episodes in the future, you will see them um, in the way that I want to, to talk about them and I want to knit their designs. Some of them were designers, some of them have podcasts, um, so they were different kind of um, angles to the knitting world. Um, but I think one of the things I really could start with um, is the um, seer. And that is a cloak. It's going to be quite big. This is uh, Ninja, or Ninja, as you said, chicken. She, uh, her name is Maria. She uh, has a podcast and she has some designs. I have watched her podcast uh, some time and I'm really happy that I'm now actually knitting some of her designs and not that I got to meet her in Orkanger. This is the cloak. I think I can show you the other side. You can see a, a drawing. I have showed it to you uh, at least one time earlier and I have knit a little bit more um, on this. It takes uh, some concentration. The cable uh, makes me... I have to think a little bit and I cannot do this while I talk with a lot of people. So this is how far I have come. I'm going to make a hood but that's something I will do at the end. Uh, there's the cable. Um, moss stitch and uh, plain stockinette at the back. It will be something that will take some time because I increase, well now I have started to increase not that much but it will be, there will be a lot of uh, stitches on this uh, project so it will be something I knit for uh, some time I think. Um, there is a cow for this, that is Katie from Green Bean Podcast. Uh, I think she wanted to make it until the summer solstice, 
but I heard that she, ha she had some problems with her yarn, so maybe that will be until next uh, in the winter. I don't know, but I will finish maybe in the summer. I don't know. And the yarn that I'm using is something that I have got. It's quite old. It's lamb's wool. It looks like this and burgundy color. This is very thin, so I have uh, I have two strands when I knit. I have a lot of yarn. I will not run out of yarn. I think I have three kilos at least. So a little bit done on this one. I brought it with me to Orkanger to show Maria, but I didn't manage to knit there because too many people, too much talking. Usually I will start with what I finished. This episode is going to be quite messy because I have so many thoughts in my head. <laughs> Maybe I shall now jump to what I have finished because that was what I actually had planned to start with. Um, I have finished... The first thing I had finished was a shawl by Ele Skeindir. Um It is called Lysning. It is garter stitch, but still it is lace. Lace and garter stitch. That's a combination I have never, I don't think I have made up before. And this is how it turned out to be. Is this the right or the right? There is actually not really a right or wrong side to this. It is not very big. It's perfect size. <laughs> um, and you can see the pattern. I really like this one. I can see that the yarn, the colors are pooling somewhere. Um, this is hand dyed. I, I haven't dyed a lot, but this I have dyed. And this is uh, Vilja, that's a thin lamb's wool from Hillesvog. I'm very pleased with it and I have used it uh, quite much. It's not bigger than this. Problem is when it's really a lot of wind here, it sometimes blow off. So I have to try to make a knot somewhere. But it's very light and it's, um, as I said, it's not too big. I like big shawls also, but this was a really light and nice one. And it actually reminded me of another shawl I have made that I thought maybe you would like to see. And that is, well, let's see, this one. It's, it hasn't got the same shape, but still, it's the, I think it's the lamb's wool that makes it quite the same. This is Jonsok Like by Tori Seierstad. That's a Norwegian pattern. And the yarn is uh, lamb's wool, the same as I have in my seer, only with one, one thread only. Um, and two of the colors are hand dyed, as you can see, and they are hand dyed by Dvarbit, a famous Norwegian hand dyer. Um, different patterns and another way of increasing I really liked. I think the summers can be quite cold in my area. So this one, maybe not worn like this in the summer. but around the shoulders maybe, and very cute and feminine. That's the style I like. Now I can see that on the floor I have <laughs> put, I always have a cardigans. I wear cardigans when I record, but I forgot and it's not cold. So this was the cardigan I had planned to wear. Maybe I'll take it on. I will have to take it off if it gets too hot in here. Um, I'm sorry. I had thought I had planned everything. Well, I didn't. This is a cardigan by Ellie Skender. And right now I am. Um, what is the. I have forgot what the name is. I'll write it below. Um, I have. I really enjoyed this so much that I immediately started to do another one in another base uh, thin yarn I think I have one here this is the only Norwegian merino wool that you can get Leine and it smells it smells really more than any other yarn I have it smells like real sheep you can know that this is real 
it's very thin, it's uh, one ply, um, Le Brasso. I've had it for quite some time and I didn't know what to do with it, um, but I wanted another shawl uh, with that light feeling, so I have started on this in the white classic version. I have got some uh, stitch markers. I am not very good at remembering, uh, but now I have quite many stitch markers, but this is one that I got from Tarjes Mint. Mint meaning coin, like this. This is a coin, an old coin, <laughs> not in use anymore, and uh, it is from the year that I was born, which is uh, 1971. That's nice, and I got it from this uh, wife when I met them in Shen. I also have one that I got from a Norwegian audio podcast called uh, Strikkeflokken. Whoops, that's a B. Um, yeah. Where to put it? Uh, another thing that I have finished since last time is um, shawls. I mean, I love shawls. Um, I have made shimming shawl. If you watched one of my, I think it was the first episode I made in English. I said I would like to make shimming shawl uh, when I went to Orkange because that is it's quite an easy knit. And Sofia Kammerbond, the designer, she would be there, so it would be very nice to knit our, her design when I was there. Um, but then I started the shawl a little bit too early and I finished it before Orkanger. So here's the shawl. Um, I really like this. This is uh, BFL, hand dyed by Nina Petrina, another famous Norwegian hand dyer. And in like an ice blue and a more ordinary blue and then a white edge that's another kind of yarn i don't know oh what is that name it's uh yeah i think you will have to look uh, in my ravelry page i cannot uh, remember everything i think it's flora by drops yes it is white take some time to knit that border <laughs> or edge i mean but I like this very much and it's very light, it's also very light. Blue is not really my color, but still, this has, this is longer so I can really make a big knot and this will not fall off me when I walk outside in the wind. And I love this one so much so I started another one, as I always do. And where is it? Oh, it's here. <laughs> and this yarn is also from Nina Petrina. This is wool, like Norwegian lamb's wool, a little bit more rough, but still soft, I think. And with long hair. <laughs> so, I decided to have the green as, green as the color that pops the most. The garter is in green, and the other, uh, it is called uh, in Norwegian, Vår Bromster, the white one, that will be spring flowers. So there's a little bit of lilac in yellow. And I really like how this turns out. So when I when I like a pattern, I usually knit two or three or more. And I'm going to uh, knit a shawl for my sister-in-law, but I haven't started yet. Um, I always have shawls on my needles. Here you can see that spring flowers color. That is, it's very fun to knit with when these colors come. And I knit my long hair into my knitting. Um, so these two, and I have more, so maybe I can make a hat or some mittens to go along with the shawl. Um, I have something else that I have finished. And that is a couple of, a, a pair, actually three socks. So why did I make three? That's a long story, I don't know if I want to to tell all about that. It's not that exciting. Um, this is uh, a cow, sock cow by Garn Boutique in Fortuna. Every month they decide what pattern we're going to, um, to knit. So we all buy the pattern from Ravelry and then we knit and share the photos. And it is called, um, I have the pattern here, Mina Phillips, knit uh, the expat. 
she also has a, a YouTube channel that I have watched for a long time. Now this is called the bundle up socks. A very funny a kind of a tuck stitch pattern. It may look difficult, but it's not. It may look like you knit um, like stranded knitting, but it's not more than one color at a time. She said in her um, tutorial on YouTube that you, if you uh, tighten the yarn, um, or she says not to tighten the yarn, but I was so late in this cal that I have heard people who had tightened the yarn and that the pattern went into small bubbles and that they liked it, so I did so also. I used one kind of boring color, Sisu, that's a sock yarn. And I made um, the funny thing about this was this yarn with the Norwegian name Sprilsk. Um, how to translate that would be something like crazy or um, over the top or something. Kata design, she's a hand dyer. Uh, she also goes to a lot of the same festivals. Uh, she was actually at the tea party as well. Um, so this is BFL and nylon. Because this is very uh, kind of noisy. Uh, it goes very well with a solid boring one. Um, and I made, first I made, well, I have quite, I, I have a loose gauge. I should have learned to have, I should have had thinner needles, but this is how it turned out and it's okay, it's not really, uh, it's a bit loose on my foot, but it's okay, I mostly, I mostly use my socks inside. This is the, the green, I made this and halfway into this then I noticed I didn't have more green. So, and because I was late into that cal, I hurried and found some blue because I thought, why not? <laughs> I mean, I could walk around with this. They call it rock socks in Norwegian. That is kind of a one day in a year that we use uh, socks with different uh, patterns or colors to support the um, dysfunctional. Uh, ah, it's for a good purpose. Uh, so I made, started the blue, but before I finished the blue, I actually found more of this in the shop. Even though this was a color that I haven't stopped working on, but I found it. But then I didn't know if I had the time to... F so this was kind of a mess, now I have three. And guess what? I haven't got more of the blue. And that's also a, some, a color that I've stopped. Oh, irritating. That's um, When you do the cows, the cows make you... Going nuts. <laughs> oh, stressed. Um, I have some other things to show you as well. Um, or I have something I got from the tea party. Maybe I'll show you that. Uh, I met, as I said, I will talk more about the, the guests that I made um, some interviews with and the ones that I didn't manage to interview. I will talk more about them later on. I just have to prepare more and have some more time. This is something I got, you know, three house knits, Rachel. I have watched her episode for quite some time and she gave me this. This is a stitch uh, marker from Anne Tudor. I think it's a house with a heart, isn't it? Um, I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> it's so fresh. Um, we also got um, from uh, Patricia when we had that tea party on every plate there was a stitch marker with a logo for the hotel or ma manor house. Very cute in birch three three <laughs> not three. Uh, and I also had something else. Uh, where do I start? I got something from Paige the Framer. I almost said Paige the Farmer because they made a joke out of that. Uh, she gave me uh, that's a, uh, a button. I can put it on my project bag. And I got something else. I think that was from her. When I was finished with that day, I was so uh, overwhelmed. These are also um, stitch markers in a nice little bag. And Margrethe from Margrethe's Hobbykrok. 
a Norwegian podcast. She does both Norwegian and English. I got this a needle cozy. Very good to have when you knit uh, socks, for instance, or arms. Here you can see her logo. So thank you, Margrethe. And I also got um, this one. I haven't put it. Maybe I should open it. I just came home, as you can understand. From Sofia Kammerborn. I got this. Oh, there's something uh, about that special sheep on Gotland. I got this from Sofia Kammerborn. Very nice cup. Light green or just green, bluish. The island of sheep. And I would like to go to Gotland. One day I will go there. I think I'll put it here. Um, so, and in my bag I also have uh, the, the lyrics for the songs. We had a sing along at the tea party and I played the piano. Um, I also have a card from Jimmy Nitz. And the, this shawl, that's, I was looking through her uh, designs on Ravelry. This is my one of my favorites. So I think I will need something, or I, I know I will need something from her. It may be this shawl. I also have, uh, I will look more into the running yarn designs. This is just her, her note. And I even have... Yeah, I I'm gathered some information and I an eco print from Maria. I hope I will show you in the next episode. I didn't mem remember everything I wanted to do. Uh, I'm working on getting one. This is a very nice project bag. I'm not especially into rabbits. I just liked it and I like the colors. And it's uh, like the woods, and I like the woods. I come from the woods, even though I live by the sea. This is Bertie and Poppet, and her name, I should have remembered. There were so many people, I it just, um, I have to pre prepare more, and I will talk more about everyone who was there. With a very nice inside also, you can see the nice pattern. And... There's, uh, I guess this is from Patricia. It looks very <laughs> like Patricia. And it uh, It says Bernie and Puppet. Well, yes. That was some of the things from the tea party. I have something more to show you. I don't think I have showed any of these granny squares. <laughs> In the summer I had some visitors, we had an Airbnb and uh, some very nice people, Anne Lindland from Bergen and her family, they uh, came to our Airbnb and when I noticed that they were viewers of my podcast, I uh, uh, made some time with them, made sure I had some time with them and we uh, dyed yarn, hand, uh, not hand dyed, but we, hand dyed yes, but uh, not from plants. So that was the um, I don't remember the word. I'm sorry, but um, she gave me some some wool, and this is really old. It's very coarse and rustic, and it is from a mill that doesn't exist anymore if I'm right. This is from Spalnorsk, a very no, uh, old Norwegian breed that we actually have. Oh, was it another breed? Oh, I got a little bit unsure. I may say wrong now, but this is really um, an old Norwegian breed and this is naturally brown and the other I got was white. I had two of the brown and they had been in Anna's, Anna's uh, collection of yarn for a long time and she gave it to me and I, because this was in the summer, I had just started to dye, I dyed the white and I didn't have really a plan, I just tried out different colors and uh, let's see, like this and this, 
I think the colors were very nice. Light green. Um, this one I didn't really like when I made it, but when I started working on it, I really liked it. So I have made granny squares, uh, crochet. First I made a bunch of these. Maybe I'll show you one, it's easier to... This is the Arnold Carlos way. I have... Uh, I haven't talked about crochet in English very much. Double crochet in groups, four double crochet in groups of four. I just look at the Arnold Carlos how to crochet granny squares and you will see. Because usually I would do single crochet and three in the group but this is a bit bigger um, I have made with more than one color uh, let's see like this and this different versions and with the brown like this oops and this so I will join them I don't know how big this will be I I'm not sure. I don't, and maybe I need some yarn about the same thickness. I don't know. I don't have enough for the to have another uh, one more row with uh, with another or to uh, crochet them together. So this is something I work on sometimes. Uh, no hurry. <laughs> Just do it when I want. But it's fun. Um, let's see, this is one of my UFOs, UFOs. yes, Sofia Komeborn, her lovely pattern, Trondheim mitten, I just don't like to have three colors at the same time, it got very tight, I don't know if I will make it, if I will manage to get it on, I just uh, stopped, so I'll see, and I need the needles, I think I should continue because I made it through the difficult part, so now it's only the easy left. I found this again now after having met her. So, and today, uh, to, uh, this afternoon, actually, she is launching her uh, Trondheim um, of uh, a cow and a hat. The last thing I want to show you is my temperature blanket. Every day I make one row. No, uh, I make like two rows, so it will be one uh, garter stitch in a color that has a code, uh, so it depends on the temperature what color I use. I have done some mistakes because when I was away for some days and I had to to go back and to knit the days I forgot today uh, but that doesn't matter I mean uh, this is just a blanket um, the white one is the, the cold days you will see more about this later on it's in quite uh, rough yarn from Latvia and Lithuania bought on the market I think this was all. Maybe that was enough. And I will say um, something about the people I met um, further on. I just need some time. I watched their um, podcasts. I watched uh, all the designs on Ravelry and so on. And I want to present them really in a good way, not in a hurry. Uh, that would be if I had to do it today. Uh, something that is coming up in our episodes is a special meeting with a Norwegian designer called Anna Kerstin Hegdar. I don't know if you saw the, my episode from the tea party. I had this one. I was wearing this one. And that's a very light and good uh, cardigan called A Midsummer Night's Dream. It is in Holst Super Soft. Some people ask me if this is it linen because of the color maybe. The way that the increases are made makes it really uh, beautiful. It's uh, knit top down and there's also a lot of nice uh, 
details uh, in the button band. I, I will come back to this when she comes. Uh, I hope that she will do the interview both in Norwegian and English. I haven't asked her. I will try to make her do that. All her patterns, or at least a, a lot of the patterns, are in English. So this one is in English in Ravelry. I'll put the link. Now I think you will uh, have some minutes with Janne. And then uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. And I uh, am very happy because we have got a lot of new uh, subscribers when we started to do this in English also. And the tea party is part of the reason why we did so. So thank you Patricia and Mittnorsk Kultur, Culture and Knitting Festival uh, for making so many nice arrangements that enrich in our lives. Because the world of the fiber and the knitting, as you may have heard uh, the, the guests we're talking about in episode 111, uh, it makes us connect and it's really nice. And to meet uh, in the same room, that's definitely the best, but to meet on YouTube, that's also very nice. So thank you for watching and now I will uh, let Janna in here and she will talk to you a little bit. And this is then the end of that episode. This is uh, my pro project uh, to the knitting uh, bags. I uh, This is curtain. And I am making them now. And uh, I have some more here. This is my uh, my place. I have uh, sewing machines, thread. I have uh, more machines, more machines. I have a knitting machine. It's not. Uh, I haven't used it for a while. I have to uh, find it on the road. I have yarn, lots of yarn, lots of yarn. It's cotton and it's wool, and I fabric. It's uh, uh, th this is uh, old curtain I get from uh, family and friends, and I sew uh, the knitting bags on. I have uh, this is for my grandchild. This is uh, tights to my grandchild. I haven't done them yet, and I have a lot of fabric. I have zipper. This is the sun is here, but this is my place when I uh, I uh, have uh, all my uh, project. I this just day on the top of the sofa. There is my project, but I uh, have uh, a lot of things that I should do uh, more. My husband said that uh, my uh, <laughs> place is uh, it's uh, very much, and I have. More yarn, finished sock, my sock box for 2020, and uh, I have uh, lots of dyed yarn that I dyed by myself. And here I have dyed yarn. I should go, and we have uh, in the weekend we have uh, dyed yarn. I dyed lots of yarn on the different uh, color. And I, uh, I love this yarn. I love purple and uh, green. Turkeys. Mm -hmm. So, lots of yarn. So I can knit. It's a uh, baby merino from uh, Drops. It's a fabulous yarn to uh, to uh, dye. So. I don't know what I would knit uh, about it, but uh, and I will go down to my other place, uh, and you will see my uh, my blanket is finished. My heart blanket is finished, and here is the blanket. It's uh, crochet in corner to corner. I love this. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, making a blanket and uh, it's crochet and uh, this way and, uh, this is scrap yarn 
and I buy a uh, one kilo of this and it's almost one kilo of scrap yarn and now I have buy should we see uh, this is for a new blanket uh, with the heart this is for my grandson grandchild Leon he is uh, been sick four years uh, on Friday but I I'm not finished yet I hope I will get it from Christmas but he has uh, he will have um, a setestal pattern like his uh, sister and uh, mother so uh, I will start on that but it's the heart uh, blanket first because uh, my uh, husband's uh, grandchild will be 17 in July so he she will get that so that's uh, all from me and uh, I can take you back to to this I have uh, this is my uh, knitting when I, I show it uh, on the last podcast I think yes and we have a boat and I said uh, I will uh, make uh, non repair on the boat so we have uh, we have uh, bought it and here is my socks from last year lots of socks I think it's what 28 socks I knit last year and here I have more I I love to do other things I showed you this last time but here is a sweater when I have designed it it's a owl on the side and I show it to you and here is a Christmas Nisselue we called it in Norwegian here is some more I don't use uh, I, I use fabric to to uh, the Christmas present I don't uh, make uh, uh, lots of paper Sen so I I saw the, this tie thing and uh, and uh, I put the gift on the Christmas gift on this and I'd use it on uh, next year and next year and next year so I have so, some some of them some li they are in my in my bag and here I have a this is just a hat you find it on Ravelry it's a great so that's all from me this day